conducting three experiments. This experiment is focused on the refraction to a rectangular glass block. A simple pendulum oscillation experiment. This experiment is based on electricity practical, checking the resistance of two wires. My name is Shwama Saili Vuanami Yeten. My name is Ariel Walufemi Alebi. And this project is centered about how um, refraction occurs to a rectangular, a rectangular glass block. So we're going to place the glass block here and put pins in a straight line that's passing through the glass block horizontally. And then afterwards, we have to like bend down and look to the glass block so that we can avoid parallax error and place pins in a straight line as we can see the nails so we can see the way light bends to the rectangular glass block. And I put it to, and then I put the second pin to. Then now that we've done that, we roll the lines to show the change in direction of the lights and then we see it. So you can see the light has changed from here and it has bent all the way to here away from the light center of the line. My name is Bokisu. My name is Zara. This is a pendulum and today we're going to be have, making an experiment on the numbers of oscillation. So this is a pendulum bulb and we're going to be doing a total of 10 oscillations for three rounds. Each round we're going to calculate the time. Three, two, one. One, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Initially, we got 13 seconds for the first round, and we're going to do another one and take the average. So, in three, two, one. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. For this round, we got a total of 14 seconds. Mm -hmm. Using a basic scratch, there are things you need to understand. First of all, when you look at this code area, it has a lot of control. So you check on your own system, you'll be able to see all the control starting from events so the most important thing is this let's get a bouncing ball let's create a bouncing ball so for you to create a bouncing ball you look at your events when you go to events you can pick when clicks and drop it on your code field now here is your code field where you drop your code and then you have your building blocks which are already predefined codes that you can now use to build your code. So once we have our code from the event code, you can now begin to control whatever you want to control. But let's get all the sprites in. From the sprites, you choose a sprite. The first sprite we want to choose is, we'll choose probably a big visible ball something that is visible so that when this thing falls up and down, it will be able to hit an object. Now, what is there is that this card, we want this ball to fall on this card and squash the card. So this ball will need to fall and squash the card. So we have how many things? We have two things. So if you want this to work, first thing first is start with the ball. We can start coding the ball. When we have all of these codes imputed into the robots, so what we are now going to do is to take the entire code and transfer it into the memory chip of every robotic arm that we have. Now the robotic arm will start what? Delivering whatever you have uh, coded. So let's go and see what will happen to the robotic arm 
in this particular case and see how the program goes. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the future robotic engineers. Let's see what they can do with it. Please come over. So what we are seeing here now, we are seeing a typical robotic arm. Whatever you've programmed in the system, once you're done programming it in the system, you bring it into the Raspberry memory of the robots. My name is Anya Adenisosetio, and I'm in STEM Superstars Robotic Club. Previously, we made a driverless car. Now we made a smartphone controlled two-wheel car. So, to make this car is really simple actually. All you have to do is assemble the base, add the tires, the geared motors, connect everything. Then, you have to connect the wires that are the gear motors to the Arduino board here. Once you have done that, you have to make sure that the battery is connected to the motor, the motor board here. So once you're done with that, you have to connect the Arduino board to the Bluetooth because this is Bluetooth controlled, so you can use your phone to control the robot. So once you have done connecting everything, all you, need, you have to add your switch because that's actually very important. Then put your batteries, then you're actually done. That's all. My name is Aisha Mustafa. Today we're going to be I'm making a lightsaber in STEM club. First, you get your materials, which are the battery connector, your covers, your sticks, then your wires, and your LED lights, and then your switch. So, firstly, you start by connecting your wires to your LED and then sticking it on the stick. Then, you slide it through the hole which is in the cover and you connect it to the battery connector then you can after that you can connect it to the switch and then you can put your batteries after you insert your batteries you will give it another lead so then you will now get a glue gun and then you can glue your extra cover to the end that is under the battery Make sure you glue it tight and then you can press it down. Next, you, go, you want to, to cover your lightsaber, so then you put glue at the edges. So, now that I've put in my glue, I can push it, my wires inside and then I will stick it together. So, next, you get your glue PVC and then you get your so you can glue it to the mouth, then you can insert your blue film, and your light table is done. So now I finished checking if all the wires are connected. So now I'm going to test run it. Okay. 